of law states, Whenever anyone questions anything regarding Mega Man 3, such as boss design, controls, weapon concepts, or stage layout, the answer is of course, because Mega Man 3 is a released beta. <laughs> Released on September 28, 1990 for the Famicom in Japan and November 22, 1990 for the NES in the United States by Capcom, Mega Man 3 is one of the most important games in the Mega Man franchise, selling 1.08 million units as of November 2021 and being one of Capcom's most successful video games from a financial standpoint, Mega Man 3 set a lot of foundational concepts for the rest of the Mega Man series to follow. Concepts like sliding and rush would leave their mark forever on the franchise and even platforming video games as a whole. There have been many videos on the internet criticizing and defending Mega Man 3, and people have many viewpoints as to whether or not the game is one of the best in both the series and on the NES. This video's purpose is not to do that. There are plenty of other resources one can find as to people's viewpoints on the game. However, this video will focus on a common criticism of the game and why it is so fundamental to this game's identity. That criticism being that the game feels unfinished or broken. Unknown to some, this is not a subjective opinion, but is actually objectively correct. Mega Man 3 is an unfinished game that never got to reach its full vision. And that is the point of Gamma's Law and this video. Again, as a warning, this is not a critical analysis of whether or not the game has good design, but rather an overview on why the game is incomplete and how this happened. Let's start with a cursory introduction to Mega Man 3 for those who have not played the game before. However, I do not recommend skipping this segment as it is vital to a point I will make later. Mega Man 3 takes place a few months after Mega Man 2 in the year 20XX. This part of the Mega Man timeline is known as the Classic Series, and comprises the numbered entries in any game taking place in this version of 20XX. During the events of Mega Man 2, the hero Mega Man soundly defeated the antagonist Dr. Albert Wily and foiled his plot for world domination. Wily was fueled by his insecurities and how Dr. Thomas Light, also the creator of Mega Man, got more recognition than his work did. In this game, Dr. Wily claims to have changed his ways and poses a truce with Dr. Light to build a giant peacekeeping robot. As part of this, eight energy elements were required to power the mechanical giant, which were found on various uncharted planets. To collect these, eight new robot masters, advanced robots with state-of-the-art artificial intelligence, are built by the two doctors and sent to explore the extraterrestrial landscapes and secure the elements. However, the robots soon go haywire, and Mega Man is deployed to figure out what is going on and to secure the energy elements. Along the way, he meets a mysterious robot named Breakman, who stops Mega Man at various points to slow him down, or even to create a new path for the Blue Bomber. After defeating the eight robot masters, more robots appear to challenge Mega Man in four of the previous locations, making their layouts harder. These are known as the Dock Robots, more on them later. After defeating these robots and returning to Dr. Light's lab, Mega Man learns that Dr. Wily backstabbed them, and he was the reason why the robots went rogue. He stole the energy elements and the peacekeeping robot named Gamma, the namesake of the law, and ran off to his newly constructed fortress. After four castle levels, including defeating the previously destroyed robot masters, Mega Man defeats Dr. Wily in Wily Machine 3, only to find out it's a fake robot impersonator. He then heads to the sixth and final Wily Castle level and defeats Dr. Wily for real, who is using Gamma as a war machine. Mega Man defeats Dr. Wily, who begs for mercy as before, and turns Gamma to scrap metal. But before he can escape or capture Wily, rocks bury both adversaries. The mysterious Breakman manages to rescue Mega Man, but fails to capture Wily, instead returning Mega Man to Dr. Light's lab. Dr. Light then informs Mega Man that Breakman is actually Mega Man's older brother, Proto Man who ran away due to his nuclear core being defective. 
Dr. Light wanted to replace it with the solar core that is now used in Mega Man, but Proto Man was worried it would take away his identity. This leaves Mega Man to contemplate his long-lost brother with Wily's UFO in the background indicating that he survived to fight another day. Finn. That was a somewhat advanced plot for a 1990 NES game, and while it's not the most groundbreaking story ever, it advances the plot development of Mega Man forward in vital ways for the rest of the series by introducing Proto Man especially and establishing Wily's character more. Here's the problem. Some of that straight up is never mentioned in the game and is only in the manual. There are only two actual cutscenes to explain the story. One after the Robot Masters to explain Gamma's absence and the ending cutscene. Most first time players will likely be very confused if they were not told the plot set up prior as a result. Though it was common at the time to include the story in the manual and not in the game, it feels incomplete to include the middle and end of the story in the game, but not the beginning. This is especially strange considering Mega Man 2 has an opening sequence in the game to set up the story, as does Mega Man 4 after this game. I wouldn't be surprised if some of you watching this video didn't know all the Robot Master stages take place on different planets. The story, however, is not the only incomplete part of this game's vision, as there is plenty more examples of this. Now we'll shift to the gameplay. Mega Man 3 has 8 Robot Master stages that can be selected in any order, just like in the previous game. The 8 Robot Masters are Needle Man, Magnet Man, Gemini Man, Hard Man, Top Man, Snake Man, Spark Man, and Shadow Man. In each level, Mega Man will run, jump, and shoot his way to victory using the Mega Buster and by overcoming the various platforming obstacles in his path. As mentioned earlier, this game introduces two new wrinkles to the formula, sliding and rush. Sliding is a mechanic wherein the player presses down and jump at the same time to slide along the ground, which is useful for evading enemy attacks or closing the distance to the enemy to attack. Rush is Mega Man's new robot dog that assists the blue hero in three different modes. Coil functions as a trampoline to jump higher, Marine allows quick underwater travel, and Jet allows temporary flight. At the beginning of the game, only Coil is usable, while Marine and Jet are unlocked by defeating Shadow Man and Needle Man respectively. The issue is that while Coil works fine, Marine is only able to be used in three levels, Shadow Man Stage, Doc Shadow Man Stage, and Wily Stage 1, due to a lack of water in the other levels. Rush Jet, meanwhile, is so broken due to its ability to fly anywhere and bypass obstacles that it was changed from Mega Man 4 onwards. Rush is supposed to be an evolution of items 1, 2, and 3 from Mega Man 2, which each had their own unique properties. Item 2 especially is the direct predecessor to Rush Jet, allowing you to fly across a level. The difference is that Item 2's vertical position cannot be changed once it is spawned, and it will fly straight forward until a different item or weapon is selected or hits a wall. With Rush, you have full control, which the developers likely didn't think would break the game as much as it did. In fact, it can even be used to save a jump if you fall. Each level ends in a boss fight against the aforementioned Robot Masters who use their various properties to try and kill you. If you defeat them, you gain their special weapon and each Robot Master is weak to another Robot Master's special weapon, forming a rock-paper-scissors gameplay style as players try to discern what boss is weak to what weapon. However, players have limited ammo for each of these weapons preventing abuse. In this game, the weapons are Needle Cannon, Magnet Missile, Gemini Laser, Hard Knuckle, Top Spin, Search Snake, Spark Shot, and Shadow Blade. Here's the issue. Some of these weapons are nerfed or buffed versions of previous weapons, do not work as intended, or are poorly thought out to begin with. Needle Cannon, for example, is just a Mega Buster, but it can shoot faster. Shadow Blade is a heavily nerfed variant of Metal Blade from Mega Man 2, while Search Snake is a buffed version of Bubble Lead from the same game. While there's nothing of particular note for Magnet Missile, a heat-seeking weapon, or Hard Knuckle, a hard-hitting projectile that has long wind-up, the final three weapons are of particular importance. Spark Shock is a horizontally moving projectile that stuns enemies instead of killing them. While this is a great concept, 
that would later be revisited with weapons such as Chill Spike from Mega Man 10 or even Crystal Hunter from Mega Man X2, it does not functionally work in this game because you can still take damage from running into the enemy. In addition, you cannot switch to the other weapons until the shock effect has worn off, making it useless in most scenarios. This is a buffed version of Ice Slasher in the first game, because you can have two projectiles on screen at a time instead of one, but it's still not a very useful weapon regardless. Gemini Laser is another horizontally moving projectile, and while its large hitbox and wall bouncing properties sound useful, the fact that you can only use one at a time, and it slows down the game to a considerable degree, assuming you aren't playing on Mega Man Legacy Collection in turbo mode, ensures it isn't practical in most situations. This is a primary showcase of how Mega Man 3 was not optimized for NES. And then there's Top Spin, which is broken in both senses of the word. A melee weapon, pressing attack in the air has Mega Man spin around at a high speed. The problem is that it does not work most of the time and is poorly thought out. Oftentimes, you will take contact damage while using this weapon, making it a dangerous proposition and an unadvisable tool for the majority of the game. You also get pushed back if you don't take contact damage, meaning you may fall into a bottomless pit. Even worse, there is a glitch wherein if you use top spin while fully inside of an enemy's hitbox, it will drain all of your top spin weapon energy in one shot, making it worthless. Interestingly, this weapon is also broken in the other direction, as it can be used to one-hit kill not one, but two bosses! Both the Holograph Mega Mans in Wily Stage 3 and the second form of Gamma in the final level can be ended in one top spin. This is because of the lack of invincibility frames on both bosses, allowing you to spam the attack button and kill both in one shot. This is on top of another issue this game presents unique to it. Unlike other Mega Man games where there is one weakness chain that loops around, Mega Man 3 effectively has two. Top Spin beats Shadow Man, Shadow Blade beats Spark Man, Spark Shock beats Magnet Man, Magnet Missile beats Hard Man, and Hard Knuckle beats Top Man. As for the other three robots, Search Snake beats Gemini Man, Gemini Laser beats Needle Man, and Needle Cannon beats Snake Man. This is a cool idea and concept, and certain robot masters have secondary weaknesses, such as Gemini Man taking extra damage from Shadow Blade. However, it also ensures most players will likely fight at least two robot masters with just the Mega Buster, even with optimal planning, which is poorly thought out. Each robot master is also weak to their own weapon, which is an evolution of Metal Man dying in one to two hits to his own Metal Blade in Mega Man 2, although you can't take advantage of this until the boss rush. More on that later. To recap the structure up to this point, Mega Man enters one of eight levels, fights through it by attacking and platforming, defeats a boss, and gains their weapon which is strong against another boss. This is repeated until all eight Robot Masters are defeated, which is when the Dot Robot levels start. These four levels are revisits of Spark Man Stage, Shadow Man Stage, Gemini Man Stage, and Needle Man Stage. The issue is that these stages are a huge spike in difficulty and are way more difficult than the levels that follow due to the lack of checkpoints before the first of two dock robots per level, harder level design, and the fact that the dock robots are each weak to two different weapons you have already obtained as opposed to their original weaknesses. Each dock robot emulates a robot master from Mega Man 2, these being Metal Man, Quick Man, Air Man, Crash Man, Flash Man, Bubble Man, Wood Man, and Heat Man. These bosses are extremely difficult to defeat without the use of E-Tanks, items scattered throughout the levels that replenish your health to maximum but can only be used once. You can carry up to 9 E-Tanks at a time. In addition, while the level layout is changed to make it more difficult, these are still mostly the same level layouts as before, leading some to call this padding. Whether or not that is a good thing is up to player discretion. The six Wily stages, by comparison, are much easier difficulty-wise and hand out E-Tanks as if they are candy leading most players to become overstocked by the end, especially considering the fortress bosses of stages 1 and 3, Kamigoro Maker and Holograph Mega Mans, are a step down in difficulty compared to the Doc Robots prior. Yellow Devil Mark II, the boss of the second fortress level and successor to the Yellow Devil in the first Mega Man, can be easy or difficult, depending on how good players are at memorization and taking advantage of janky hitboxes. For reference, Stage 4 is the boss rush that is present in every Mega Man game, wherein the player must fight the eight Robot Masters again in a row. Stage 5 is the fight against Wily Machine 3, or Pinbot, and Stage 6 is the final boss against Gamma. Interestingly, Wily Stage 6 only has two rooms, with the second being the final boss. In the first room, you are awarded an E-Tank, Health, and Extra Life, 
two weapon refills, and even two question mark cans, which gives you one of the previous items at random. This almost feels like a debug room, as it would make sense for the developers to use these in order to test various damage values and collisions for Gamma. It's strange to put all this before the final boss, especially as you start the level with full health, making the health item useless. As you can see, the difficulty of the levels is wildly inconsistent and doesn't make much logical sense, leading to it feeling unfinished. There are individual level concepts as well, such as Top Man's spinning tops at the end of his stage, or the general lack of water, that more specifically point out inconsistencies, but the point is made. If all of this wasn't enough, there are a number of glitches, bugs, and even developer debug codes left in the game that I guarantee are not supposed to be there. Skipping over the aforementioned top spin glitch, let's start with some general gameplay glitches. In Wily Stage 1, you may notice that between the Japanese and American versions, these platforms are different. This is because in the Japanese version, if you die to Kamigoro Maker, you will respawn in the floor and be unable to continue, forcing you to reset the game. The platform changes in the United States version accommodate this. In the weapon select screen accessible by pausing the game, you can actually access the Rush Marine and Rush Jet earlier than you are supposed to by simply pressing the right arrow button on Spark Shock and Shadow Blade respectively. The catch is that these weapons will be empty and you'll have to refill them using a weapon ammo pickup. If you do this, they will become accessible even before beating the usual stages you obtain them from. Normally, while using Rush Jet, you can only fire two shots on screen at a time instead of three. However, when you pause the game, the shots do not go away. As a result, if you switch to another weapon, the buster shots will take on the properties of that special weapon. For example, if you fire a shot while Rush Jet is out, pause the game, and switch to Top Spin, those buster shots will do the same amount of damage to enemies as Top Spin does, allowing you to kill the bosses even easier. There are many more examples, such as skipping the cutscene with Proto Man and Gemini Man stage, bugging the level out due to the cutscene doubling as a loading screen, but the point is that this game has a lot of bizarre and wonderful glitches. There's even some unused objects, such as an entirely unused background object in Gemini Man stage, with planetoids that functions properly if injected into the game's code, but is never used. On top of this, the debug codes that the developers put in to test the game's mechanics were also left in, and can be accessed by plugging in a second controller and holding specific button combinations. These include holding up and A to freeze enemies, and holding right to do a super jump, which can even save you from falling into bottomless pits. It is important to note that these codes are not available in Mega Man Legacy Collection because it does not recognize multiple controllers. Several concepts also never made it into the final game, such as a fourth rush mode called Rush Drill, allowing players to burrow beneath the earth, a concept that would reappear in Marvel vs. Capcom in addition to some other more minor things. Up to this point, I have made it clear that this game is unfinished for various reasons, and calling it a release beta isn't out of the question. But why is this? Why does so much of the game either function incorrectly or isn't fully thought out? The answer is very simple. Crunch. Crunch is a term used in the video game industry to describe when developers have to create a game in a very short amount of time, often unpaid, which leads to a heavy decrease in quality. While Mega Man 2 suffered from this, Mega Man 3 was even worse. While we don't know the exact time frame, we do know that it started development roughly around one year after Mega Man 2, which means at maximum, it was developed in eight to nine months. And at minimum, it was developed in three to four months. This is insane for a game like this, and the developers noted that the last two months in particular were absolute hell. For this section, I'll be utilizing quotes found in the Mega Man Official Complete Works book, which contains developer insight and high-quality artwork as collected by Capcom and Udon Entertainment. According to the former series producer, who at the time was a character designer and sub-planner, KJ Inafune, I was responsible for taking on anything and everything that we were running out of time on. I did the enemy setting, the specifications, and even worked on the maps. By the time I started working on these things, however, we were already in trouble as far as deadlines were concerned, so I got some extra help and divided up the work amongst us. As for why there was a one-year gap between Mega Man 2 and Mega Man 3, that was because... 
Our eternal leader quit his job. We got a new leader for three, but he didn't really understand Mega Man the way his predecessor did, and that resulted in some headaches. It was especially hard on me because I had learned so much while working on 1 and 2, which left me with a lot of preset notions about how things should be. For reference, Akira Kitamura left to join a new company, Takeru, and directed the game Kokoro, which has many similarities to Mega Man. These aren't the end of the development struggles, however, as some unfortunate events only compounded this problem including an entire stage having to be remade. I focused entirely on Top Man for an entire week, but lost all of the data in a big crash when someone tripped over the power cord. I was so devastated, but with everything so fresh in my mind, I was able to get back to where I was in about three days. This is in addition to the change in composers midway through development, as the original composer, Harumi Fujita, only got to compose three songs before taking maternity leave. These songs are Gemini Man Stage, Needle Man Stage, and Staff Roll. The rest were composed by Yasuaki Fujita. If you've ever wondered why some songs sound different, this is the reason. I hope that with this video, you can see why Mega Man 3 is a functionally incomplete game, how this happened, and why Gamma's Law is a useful tool to explain all of this in summary. However, I want to reiterate that this does not at all comment on the quality of the game. Whether or not the game is of high quality is entirely up to player discretion and falls outside of the realms of this video. Not only does the original creator of this law, Mega Man's subreddit Discord admin and creator of base comic adventures Rhythm view Mega Man 3 as his favorite game in the series, but I also like the game as well, speaking on a personal level. Again, that is not the point of this video. The point was to, essentially, be an expanded explanation for Gamma's Law and why Mega Man 3 released in this state in addition to what the consequences of it were. There are other games in this series that were developed in similarly short time frames as well due to crunch, such as Mega Man 7 or Mega Man Zero 2. Mega Man 3 is unique in that it arguably has the most mechanics to fall victim to crunch, in addition to the cascading set of events that led to this conclusion. If you take away anything from this video, it should be this. Mega Man 3 is a released beta.